All right, so interactive. Um, I'm going to rush through right now uh, as quick as possible. And actually, what I want is Q&A more than anything. Uh, first of all, who of you does know the Interlexit campaign? Um, that's what I guess. Quite a lot. Who does not know it at all? Okay, because then I'm going to show you the videos, because uh, they take like three or four minutes. Otherwise, I would just skip that. Um, first of all, uh, what can we do against various discourses, but as well against massive drone strikes about, like, you know, um, regional. Uh, um, secret services, you know, not just about massive, but also about financing fascists, like this you and others. Um, in all the campaigns we know uh, so far, uh, or we went through, um, which are like, you know, like big campaigns, which are media, spectral, whatever, uh, they are very, like, working with fear and fear mongering, so they deepen into the fear. So what I'm not talking about now is, for example, your work, which I, like, I, I have deep, like, I can just bow, but also all the network, you dig into it, you dig, 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 you do daily politics work. I'm not talking about this right now. You know, what I'm talking about is, like, how can you do, like, propaganda, manipulative, um, you know, like general mainstream campaigns. That's that's what I'm talking about. And we're we were thinking about what can we do in research for one or two years, talking to many people, thinking about how can we frame it. And one of the points was not to do fear mongering. Um, also, what we did with Interexit is to take this um, meme of reality and non-reality. So secret services, you often don't know what's real and what's not. What they do, what they don't do, they basically don't give you a lot of information, so you have to guess. If you look at Interexit, it's quite similar in many aspects. You don't know if what we, what we said is true and what is not. Uh, we also, during our campaign, did not know a lot of what's true and what's not, because it became reality very quickly. People came towards us. We didn't know if they are there to infiltrate us, if they're actually people who want to leave, if they're people, you know, like, this constant oscillation of reality and non-reality was, like, going on a lot for us, and I guess for them as well. Um, so, then, if you think about this privilege you have, uh, that you have an almost no campaign, if you work against Shell or Lidl or something like that, they will always have a press office. Secret services basically neither confirm nor deny. So you can tell anything, and they won't be able to respond. We saw it until GCHQ did respond and said that like, it was very funny. Um, <laughs> they were saying that basically um, they're not cooperating with us, and that they are, what is else did they say? Uh, that they are uh, having a very ethical program, and they're very proud of helping those who have doubts within the GCHQ. Um, with a special program. So it was very absurd what they said. I thought it was actually someone who could have been from us. Um, and of course, like, if we work with you, we always have to look and see very smart and clean hacking. That's not target group. Yes, exactly. We have to know, we have to look like. That's <laughs> okay. Um, okay, I'm going to rush through some of our first actions. Like, for example, oh, we need some sound. Do you have sound for me? <laughs> okay, here with our song. Um, this was uh, at the Shell, like Shell invited me as an art, like a, a scientist. I said that I'm going to create a machine that's cleaning the air. It didn't work. It was. <laughs> Um, yeah, so you could go, yeah, whatever. So, whatever, I was uh, like uh, going to Shell and just making an oil spill on stage. So, what happened to us? We got a Braunkohle, 100% big. But it was a good thing for all the Mitarbeiterinnen and Mitarbeiter from Wattenfall. And I can say, 100% Zukunft für die Arbeits. <laughs> okay, so here we were working for Vattenfall. We just uh, went to the headquarters, that's one of the biggest all, uh, energy corporations of 
Northern Germany, actually a Swedish state company, and um, it was, I mean, I'm just going to spare you with political context, the context, but it was a critical situation for the company to take a decision whether they leave or they would not leave the northern area of Germany. They now did, but we took the decision for them first, three days before they did, <laughs> and we said, you're going to stay and do everything renewable. So we entered the headquarters, we sent out the press releases, and the press covered it as a wonderful decision. Even CDU was saying it was because of us, which is a conservative party of Germany. Um, then we also, that before that, we were on um, Republica working as Google employees. So, for example, um, we, we invented some Google products uh, uh, that were a drone that is taking care of your kids, you know, like looking out uh, for the park lots or takes out the garbage and stuff like that. Very handy stuff. I mean, 2016, come on, guys. And um, then we also invented an app that is take, like filtering all your emotions. Look at what you actually need, it's called Google Hug, and if you need a hug, it finds people around you that need exactly that. Um, and a few other products. But then, you know, Google wanted to sue us, and it went on like that, so we had a big, like, fight in the media, it was very fun. Um, we worked for parties, obviously. Uh, we went to a esoteric channel and put an egg on the moderator's head because of armor cleaning. Or uh, we worked, we created a bot army, like a anti-sexist bot army that is like doing a linguistic Twitter analysis and everyone who needs help, oh, we are going to cure. So the idea was uh, that anyone who was saying, I want to fuck you, feminist bitch, I'm going to rape you, whatever, like really harassing shit, we would filter it and they would get six days every day a video, a coaching video to become um, feminist. <laughs> and because we had like 150 bots uh, that were like, so if you block one, the next one would answer, and like, I was checking, so how do you feel today, I better like take care of your anger, go out, you know, need to keep our air today, like, really like, take care of yourself. Uh, we had this whole like geeky key thing, of course, and we helped those trolls. But the thing, I think one of the points was not just fun, but it was also uh, to give a tool because like if you're being harassed you either ignore it or you engage and uh, it's very difficult to find the line between to, with trolls, you know, so with this you still today you can really use it have this video and just send them this video which is not really engaging but making fun of them but also not completely ignoring so I hope it helps a little bit Okay, <coughs> oh yeah, this was the IFD, uh, I, like, this is the uh, granddaughter of Hitler's economic minister, I tried to, he, he like, did a high Hitler, so he got the part away. Um, but then we did the, uh, before that, we did the uh, Flo Tesla campaign, which is like helping uh, refugees to cross the border. I'm going to spare you with the videos, but basically we, so people who are going for holiday, so it's very low level, you're in Italy, you're going back to Germany, Denmark, wherever, you take someone in your car, because it's very difficult to travel if you're black uh, in, and you're not, uh, you're illegalized within Europe, um, to cross borders, in, if you travel with trains or buses, because they control it a lot and with racist, racist profiling. <coughs> but if you're in like a German car, you know, and you get a lot of like, hints on the website how it works, like put like German flags on your stuff and like, you know, also don't take too much cash because you could be sued for being a trafficker and many like detailed things you have to think about. Um, and so it just takes this person back home. And more than 800 people did it. So we got a lot of photos of people like family reunions and it was very touching. But anyway, um, we also created a fund where you could donate to pay the lawyers of those who are being caught and you know have like an autumn kind of like a penalty for doing that or other things. So this just to like lower the you know the the, um, the thingy. Um, <clears throat> and we did a lot of those uh, pictures, we put them all over as we had oh yeah then Austria discussed it in the parliament obviously they don't like that. Um, it was then also we are <laughs> 
can do with who is. This was, this was actually funny. You know what you can do with who is. Uh, I just, in a random moment of fun, I just said, like, who is? Well, I ran into G Pop. <laughs> so then it became very big. And the whole, like, you have, like, hundreds of websites and hundreds of comments of neo Nazis saying they are paid by the Zionists to, like, you know, make Europe and crash Europe with refugees and whatever, whatever. It's, like, completely absurd. and. They all think we're like, and actually I have to tell you now, officially in the stream, we are not paid by the Ayn Rand Institute, which is a Zionist institution. Ayn Rand doesn't usually have rights of addresses. Yes, so it was like Ayn Rand is now working with anarchists, and it was really weird. They, they really analyzed. There's, there's pictures of me being like, look, this name, this name, this name. He must be an agent, and like you know. It's, Really funny. Uh, actually, Ayn Rand reacted and they um, tried to sue Frankenstark uh, because they were mentioning a request to the German parliament if we are working for the Ayn Rand Institute. So it was like a bit absurd. Quite cabaret of this, like, uh, trolling people. Okay, this was the run through. Oh, yeah, the, the Nazis uh, identity, the identitarians in Austria copied our Flughelferin into Grenzhelferin. And they are, I have to say, warning, the identitarians are quite strong in like um, taking over pop culture and like, you know, like new forms of activism and uh, there's no one <coughs> that I think that the, the blues are winning right now in Austria. Okay, this said, now let's plunge into intellectuals. This is Thomas Gray, one of the whistleblowers uh, from the NSA. Um, we won him and a few others to help us campaigning. Uh, so the result of a lot, after a lot of like uh, research, what we could do, you know, obviously we thought about big things, just like John Oliver did, and what can we tell the people to make them act, to mobilize, to say like, and one of the typical campaigning answers is gives just a radical bottom line. Stop everything. Stop working. So you go to the radical side of saying just, you know, see what services, stop existing. Consider that as an option. We could try to just imagine what could happen, you know, open the space and then maybe we can debate about it. Obviously it's not that after all campaign everyone debating like what would we do or that. But still, um, this was the, the approach. So Elsewhere, Berlin-based anti-surveillance activists have used drones to drop leaflets over the US National Security Agency complex in Germany, urging its employees to quit. launched by a German privacy activist just last week. Now, the actual content of the leaflets uh, hasn't been described, but the Intel Exit website does provide numerous reasons for intelligent employees to quit. It says the workers uh, are the most surveilled and therefore by the work of the normal life without paranoia. Other reasons known to the spy agencies uh, which threaten fundamental freedoms and prove ineffective in the fight against terrorism. Not to mention the risk of knowledge. Intellection helps people break free from the intelligence community and build a new life. Although the organization is just a week old, it's already been quite active. They placed out billboard campaigns near American and British spying facilities around the world. Intellexit activists also make phone calls to secret offices of intelligence agencies, as well as hand over brochures to surveillance employees arriving at work. Ariel Fisher, a spokesperson for Intellexit, as one of the main goals behind the campaign is to help intelligent workers overcome the fear of quitting their profession. Everybody is being tracked and monitored every day uh, regarding every single communication that they make. And it makes a lot of sense to, to target and to speak to the people who are upholding this system and who are part of these structures, because they really can make a difference by stepping out. When you look at, uh, at the secret services, because of their secretive nature, because they're also bound up um, in a kind of nationalist um, allegiance to, to the government, 
um, because people sign up often hoping to serve their country, to serve their people, there's a lot of shame attached to leaving, and there's definitely a fear of what might happen to me if, if I choose to exit. At the moment, um, we've, we've been overwhelmed by the positive responses that we've had to our campaign um, and to the people who've been coming forward. All right, so yes, they did come forward. I'm just gonna skip through. Oh, do you wanna watch the whole video? Do you want to watch the whole video, or like, I think both of you have already seen it. Uh, so, I mean, we just took, oh, just so you know, two of them are actors, and two of them are real. So, there's Bruce Schneier, there's Thomas Drake, there's two actors being psychologists, and a former um, German uh, Stasi person. Um, and we kind of like, put them together. So, we have this advertising video of them, like, really saying, looking for me, try and relax it, very cheesy, very emotional. Um, and then we had those vans, you know, like uh, circling the NSA with always like target group specific, like, you know, patriotism. And we went to the cafe, cafe Joe's, where they always go for lunch. Thomas Drake told us that they always go for lunch there. Um, GCHQ, this is a dagger complex, you can see the antenna in the back there. Um, this is the clay kazana, it's where they basically where now they are bundling all the information of Europe. You know, US Embassy, I heard they do things. Um, the new BND thing, we don't know what is there, Lichten back as well. And then we went to the Verwaltungsschutz and we put a poster. Why did we put the, this is part of the cons German constitution. It's the, it's the phrase that is saying you should not uh, Sniff into like private um, letters, believe God, I'm missing. Um, why did we put it on the Verfassungsschutz? Because the Verfassungsschutz is called Verfassungsschutz, which is Constitution Protection. That's the name of the inner, like literal name of the inner Secret Service of Germany. We put so we put the Constitution on it to make sure that it rip it apart publicly. <laughs> <laughs> They are actually doing so. We just try to produce this moment. They're very quick. They did it like, without a head. Uh, and then this part goes. Really cool. I mean, we. Yeah, just like one minute. So we uh, take the courage to print leaflets and then put them into a drone. You know, in Iraq. They did that a lot, Afghanistan as well, it's called Airborne Operation Leaflet, uh, leaf, yeah, Airborne Operation. Um, and this is when they go to Iraq and they fly over, you know, non-democratic um, areas and drop leaflets to free the people. So we did that with the US military, you know, I, we saw they might understand. Um, Spiegel actually wrote that one hour after we did that, the people within the complex did not have access to intellectual.org, which was quite funny. Um, however, this information came out. So then there's a, a philosopher, Daniel Day Kim. I think he's actually um, also a, a video game um, an actor in South Korea. But he said there is as much wisdom in listening as there is in speaking, and that goes for all relationships, not just romantic ones. So, reading this, feeling deep, uh, we just decided to create a call tender to call them up. And we did. You can now go to Biennale and uh, Langborg 4 and call the spies. So, this is a, like a Raspberry Pi, a PAP2, this PAP2. Um, VoIP switch, and you can call them through those nice telephones. You press one, you get the <coughs> German spies, two, you get the American spies, you've got over 30,000 numbers of the desk telephones, so you can go through to CIA, FBI, whatever, NSA, um, private contractors, most fun because they always are friendlier. <laughs> and you can talk to them, you can try to convince them to leave their job, to just you know, have a conversation. And, we're now building this as a performance for a company, and I mean the megalomanic vision is to build this all over the world. So if you know anyone who wants to have it, so now we're going to go to New York to the Hope X, it might go to DEFCON, it might go also to some kind of very like 
boring museums, but if you've got the whole world like calling out this file, then constantly like even just taking minutes of time from them, from damaging the world, I think that's worth a lot. But if they, maybe they're gonna also like start talking to them about ethics and just like doing this. I'm always very emotional after talking to them. Seriously. <laughs> so this is like in Dortmund or we've been in Logan, we've been in Italy, we've been in many places with that. Yeah, so that was the interaction campaign. Um, well, you know, um, I think we have to do something, we have to continue to find out what we can do. And uh, if you want to somehow support us, you can always become a penguin, um, obviously. You, like we have this wonderful supporting program, just go to support at Peng and then we can save the world all together. Thanks a lot.